my name is Morgan Weaver and for our final project today I'm going to be doing the uh, record a video of various people reading or reciting an epic poem or other pieces of literature from our studies. So the first piece of literature that's going to be recited today is Hammurabi's Law Code. My friend Lauren is going to tell you a few of those. Code 134. If a man has been taken prisoner and there is no food in his house and his wife enters the house of another, then that woman bears no blame. 196. If a man has destroyed the eye of a free man, his own eye shall be destroyed. 199. If he has destroyed the eye of a man's slave or broken the bone of a man's slave, he shall pay half his value. This is McCall, and McCall is going to be reading to y'all one of Catalyst's seductive poems called poems to lesbia um his poems were very intense and a lot about friendship love and affairs all right mccoy you can start come lesbia let us live and love nor give a damn what sour old men say the sun that sets may rise again but when our light has sunk into the earth it is gone forever give me a thousand kisses then a hundred another thousand another hundred and in one breath, still kiss another thousand, another hundred. Oh, then with lips and bodies joined, many deep thousands, confuse their number, so that poor fools and cuckolds, envious even now, shall never learn our wealth and curse us with their evil eyes. Thank you, McCall. This is Ashley, and Ashley is going to be reciting the poem, I've Been in Great Anguish. Okay. I've been in great anguish over a noble knight I once had, and I want everyone to know for all time that I loved him too much. Now I see I'm betrayed because I didn't yield my love to him, for that I've suffered greatly both in my bed and when I'm fully clad. How I'd yearn to have my knight in my naked arms for one night. He would feel a frenzy of delight only to have me for his pillow. I'm more in love with him than Blanche Floor ever was with Floris. To him, I'd give my heart, my love, my mind, my eyes, my life. Beautiful, gracious, sweet friend, when shall I hold you in my power? If I could lie with you for one night and give you a kiss of love, you can be sure I would desire greatly to grant you a husband's place, as long as you promised to, ev to do everything I wished. Thank you. So this is my friend Maggie, and she is going to be reciting one of Dante's famous poems, The Knot Circle of Hell. On March, the banners of the King of Hell, my master, Virgil said, towards us, look straight ahead. Can you make him out at the core of the frozen shell? Like a whirling windmill seen after a twilight, afore at twilight, or when a mist has risen from the ground, just such as an engine rose upon my sight, stirring up such a wild and bitter wind, I cowered for shelter at my master's back. There being no other windbreak I could find, I stood now where the souls of the last class, with fear my verses tell it, were covered wholly, they shone below the ice like straws and glass. Some lie stretched out, others are fixed in place upright, some on their heads, some on their souls, another like a bow, bends foot to face. When we had gone so far across the ice that it had that it pleased my God to show me the foul creature which once had worn the grace, the grace of paradise. He made me stop and stepping aside, he said, now see the face of this. This is the place where you must arm your soul against all dread. Do not ask reader how my blood ran cold and my voice choked up with fear. I cannot write it. This is a terror that cannot be told. I did not die and yet I lost life's breath. Imagine for yourself what I became, deprived at once of both my life and death. The emperor of the universe of pain jutted his upper chest above the ice. Am I closer in size to the great mountain? The titans made, a, the titans make around the central pit. Then they to his arms. Now starting from his, from this part, imagine the whole that co corresponds to it. If he once was as beautiful as now, he is hideous and still turned on his maker. Well, he may be the source of every woe, with what a sense of all I saw his head, towering above me, for it had three faces. One was in front, and it was fiery red. The other two, as weirdly wonderful, merged with it from the middle of each shoulder, to the point where all converged at the top of the skull. The right was something between white and bile. The left was about the color that one finds. 
on those who live along the banks of the Nile. Under each head, two wings rose terribly, then their span proportioned under each head, two wings rose terribly, their span proportioned to so gross a bird. I never saw such sails upon the sea. There were not feathers. Their texture and their form were like bat, like a bat's wings, and he beat them so that the three winds blew from him in one great storm. It is these winds that freeze all coctus, the final pit of hell. He wept from his six eyes and down three chins. The tears ran mixed with bloody froth and pus in every month mouth he worked a broken center between his rake like teeth thus he kept three in internal pain at his internal dinner for the one in in front the biting seemed to play no part at all compared to the ripping at times the whole skin of his back was flayed away the soul that suffers most explained the god is judas iscariot who he kicks his legs on the fiery chin and has his head inside of the other two have their heads who ha have their heads thrust forward the one who dangles down from the black face is Brutus. Note, he now writhes without a word, and there with the huge and sinewy arms in is the soul of Cassius, but the night is coming on, and we must go, for we have seen the whole. Thank you.